I'm here at Easel 2025, and we're doing a study to improve scientific posters, and I'm going to show you what we're doing. One of the questions we had about how people forage for information at scientific conferences is how many people go in and out the entrances at any given time of day, and kind of which entrances are more important. So we have this big entrance here, and we have a sensor right here. So this sensor counts exits and entrances just through a simple kind of laser beam type deal. It gets, it gets tripped up when multiple people cross it at the same time. It's very imperfect, but it's something. One of the interesting things I think I've learned so far is that I expected that big entrance to be the most popular, and it is the most popular for exits. The most popular entrance for entering is actually this tiny door closest to the stairs. So if you were going to place advertisements or what I'd prefer, which is like signposts of how to get to different places. If I were to put signs somewhere, I'd put them there in front of this tiny unassuming door because it's by the stairs and actually gets more incoming traffic. So we have another one of these industrial grade sensors here. And so what we generally do is do an entire loop once per hour, logging the entrances and exits on each sensor. These sensors don't really store data very well. Um, hopefully we'll design better ones in the future um, that are open source. But right now we're counting them manually, so me and Mitchell behind the camera have been going around this hall, literally writing down by hand the exits and entrances. So you can see there's a million different like behaviors that happen in poster sessions and how people forage. I knew the theory on like inter on information foraging theory and that generally people sort of, you want the most information for the least effort. But like there are a thousand variables in a poster session that can make things more effort or less effort, right? Like how wide the row is, how many people are already in it. Like if there's sunlight in your face when you look down the row, like all of this stuff contributes to like your decision to browse a row or to not. And so we've been trying to measure th some of that. So these right here, these three rows of posters are the late breaking posters. They're like the newest, hottest research around liver science. And so one of the important questions we asked was, how much traffic are the late breaking posters getting? Because that's kind of a microcosm for the rest of the poster session. And also those are the posters we really, really want to emphasize because it's such hot new research. But already you can see like there are different widths to these rows. Like this row is really wide. The other late breakers narrow and then wide again. And that what we're seeing so far informally is that that row width and how deep it is. Like if you come over here, you see how like this one goes all the way back to that like triangle wall and then this one kind of dead ends. That affects people's shoelacing behavior. So people will like walk all the way down this one and shoelace, whereas here they get kind of dead ended and go in and out. The last four days we've had sensors on all three of these late breaker rows, but we're down to one because we wanted to ask other questions. So you'll come here, this is one of the other sensors. These are pretty simple. These uh, just count entrances and exits. Um, same principle, just a little bit smaller. You can notice that like it kind of blends in with the color of the poster board. So a lot of times I've come to do the count and there's been a poster right here and people who were standing here presenting a poster didn't even really realize that sensor was there. So like it's, it's pretty nice in terms of just invisibility. We, ideally no one notices these because then they'll collect better data. So this is probably my favorite test that we're doing. We're doing basically a three component funnel conversion rate test. So we only have these sort of simple sensors that can track, you know, when people break the beam, the better ones can track which direction they're break breaking the beam. So I kind of like used what I got to try to ask interesting questions. And this, what we're doing is we're trying to count roughly how many people are in this space. Oh, and it fell, look. So clearly this did not have as much, enough adhesive. So I tried to use some double-sided tape on this one. Putty's where it's at. But the idea was to track how many people cross this barrier diagonally, either from this direction or this direction, thinking that they probably wouldn't turn around very much. And that was uh, one of the hosts here, um, Faras's idea, was that if we put this diagonally, it'll get these people, one, not two, and then it'll get somebody else like me crossing it this way. And so we have the top of the funnel there. And so they get into the zone, we have a count of roughly how many people are in this zone, a bad count. 
And then we want to know how that converts into seeing posters. And then within that, we have two choices. We have what I'm going to loosely call the bad row, where if you look down this row, it's very like barren. Like there's only a few posters, right? Nothing at the ends. So like your decision whether to go down this row, it's kind of high interaction. You know you're gonna have to walk down past three posters to even see anything. And you haven't really seen anything valuable yet. So you're kind of going on faith to enter this row. And then we have this row over here. You can already see that the front half of this row is much more popular already, at least as we're seeing it now. But this row is almost fully populated with posters, and at the end of this row, we have the top posters, or at the entrance to this row, we have four top posters that act as sort of like bait to draw people in. So the idea is, does having top posters help draw you in to see more posters? Um, so there's like three transitions. It's like, am I going to go from the aisle into the row? And then like, whoop, I'm not going to do it because it'll trip the sense. I guess it doesn't matter now. Okay. So am I going to go from the aisle into the row? I have converted into the row. And we know that this is actually a big decision. From go to, to go from here to commit into the row is a big moment. Once I'm here, what's the likelihood that I'm going to keep going down there, right? And then, so if I go further, I trip sensor two. And that counts as kind of a conversion. And so we have rough traffic in the walkway, rough traffic in the first zone of posters, and rough traffic in the second, and then we're comparing this super row with all the great posters that's full to the crappy row with no posters. Okay, so this is the uh, plenary entrance. So a big question was, after people see one of these huge talks, these really big important talks, how many come and browse like posters or the hall or whatever? Um, so what's the conversion rate of this door? And one of the interesting questions there is that different facilities will have different distances between the plenary and the hall. So like sometimes you might have to walk down a lot of hallways to get from the opening plenary to the posters and stuff like that, right? And so you might lose a lot of people. This is as close as you can get, literally. It just opens into the hall. So if we can figure out what the, how many people attended the big talk, and then what the flow was from that talk into the hall when it ended, um, then we get that conversion rate in like the best case, and then we have some baseline data on conversion rate between the plenary, opening plenary, and the hall. So there was a sensor right here and here that got blocked several times, probably way undercounted the amount of people flowing through it, but again, it's a start. I am really, really excited to get this data analyzed. I've peeked at it a little bit, and it's just super cool to see actual numbers on how many people visit a row of posters, even if they are very imperfect numbers at this stage. I will, of course, update you when we get the study results. If you run a scientific conference, big or small, and you want to try to improve your poster session and ideally measure those improvements, contact me at any of these places.